In this tutorial, I'll show you how to really uh, crank up the effects within Dynamic Paint. And I'm showing you this because I'm a pretty good artist, but that's the problem. I'm only a pretty good artist, and I know there's a lot of exceptional artists out there. In fact, every time I go to the magazine store, the bookstore, and I see these magazines of beautiful 3D illustrations, you know what? I can't do that kind of stuff, but I know you guys can. But I'm a really good animator, and I'm a very good programmer, and I'm pretty good at math as well. So I know how to create setups and situations that sometimes artists might find difficult. But if I can provide you with the right tools to kind of set you on your way, then I know you can take the rest and make some really, really cool stuff. All right? So because you don't be like, for instance, this is like, this is going to be my meteorite, right? <laughs> well, okay, so the colors aren't really that great. But what I'm going to show you is how to kind of mix and match and kind of give you some ideas. So what I have in here is five individual objects, and they're grouped together. Like I've, if I just click that one, and I press Shift G, and I get the group, then I have all these in the scene like this, and I can move them around. And they all have individual colors. Not only that, they all have individual um, dynamic paint meshes set right in here. Dynamic paint for that one. And affecting it is the mesh volume of this one right here. All right. So though if I was to run the simulation real quick and drag this down and, whoops, let me get all of them real quick. Get the group. All right. Now if I run the simulation and I move this down into the scene like this, there's a couple things happening. One is that it's carving the scene, right? And it's turning that all green. But if I turn, bring it a little bit lower into the scene and I move it, let's see if that's far enough. Now it's turning it all blue like that, all right? So I'm painting as well as carving in the scene and I, if I get to a certain depth, all right? But I really want to paint with all these colors because let's say, let's say this is my meteorite that I'm going to move in from the sky and come crashing into the earth. So yeah, okay, we better do that. We better just change it. Oops, I have individual center set. Let's see, R, Y. All right, so now I'm going to I'll crash this into the earth like this, but I don't want it to be blue. I want these colors maybe to change the earth. And remember, this is how you as an artist can come into play, and I can't. So I'm going to come into here and make sure that for each individual brush, you have to come down here and use the object material like that, and then get the name of that oh, well, we get that material, which is, well, I guess it's the white material. I don't know. Well, you kind of get the idea. You click the object material, and you go get the one that you have set. Uh, that should be orange. I guess that's my orange. And this is my red somewhere. Yeah, it looks red. And that's this one here, I guess or close, something like that. All right, so now when we run it, we should be able to now move this into the scene. Yikes, hang on, forgot, Shift-G. I could join these and just make them a single object, but I just have them this way right now. All right, All right now I run it into the scene, and now when I move it around, so maybe it's carved into the earth, and you can see it just barely gets the last one because it's tilted at an angle. If I move it down a little bit more, let's see what happens here from above. All right, so based on that, well, the angle of the object, so we'll just change it up a little bit like that there. All right, so you can really see them all affecting the surface. And the way it's doing it is that I actually have two dynamic paint surfaces going on. Up on top is a displacement surface. And then this one down here, if you look at dynamic paint in here, is a paint surface. All right, so I've created the color below the surface, so you notice it doesn't affect it. These don't affect it when it's just hovering at the surface like this. It's just moving it along, and it's only carving. It's only when I get down to where that level, that next surface layer is, you can do it. But you can change that. You can move that surface around or whatever. So that kind of gives you an idea. So maybe, say you have these, and then maybe you have fragments of a meteor that are coming in. Maybe you take one of these objects, shift G, you know, you move it, oops, I'll just shift D that one, and I'll put it over there, shift D, and I'll put that one over there, and then, you know, one of those, shift D, and I'll put that up there, something like that, and then maybe everything, so it should all be part of the same group like that. So then when you're crashing into the scene, I run it, and I just maybe so then you crash into the ground 
All right, so now when it crashes into the earth, you know, they might be pockmarks or something like that as you go along. All right, well, so that's just some more ideas for you to put into effect because you know how it is. To create that final piece of artwork is a lot of work. And, well, that's what you guys are great at, and I'm not. Okay, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next lesson.